Hello, uh, welcome back to the channel and here's a very quick update on some of my more recent work uh, from my home page um, adrianmore.co.uk uh, under my music you can find two new soundscape works one from the Hepworth Gallery near Wakefield and one from the Kellam Island Museum uh, just down the road from where I work in sunny Sheffield. These are very much a new venture for me being soundscapes there's some writing to go with them uh, I welcome your views do have a listen. I've also been doing some new more research based work on a, a piece that uses what I call the fractured acousmatic so here in the PD we have um, a piece that has a number of pathways through it. This is a, an attempt at a score and there's good 15 or so files and a number of paths through them. And then there's uh, a split in the fixed nature of the piece between obviously uh, X, the X direction in time and there are crossfades between these paths. There are two points of entry to the piece and multiple points of conclusion. I make an analogy with walking through a structured garden where it's got a number of exits and entrances. Uh, there's a point where you can uh, take very short routes and this piece can be around seven or eight minutes and very long routes where this piece can be around 35, 40 minutes. There's also a route that takes you back in a complete loop, um, which, uh, as I said, this path is just for laughs. So you could continue ad infinitum. Um, but there's also uh, fracturing in the Y direction in terms of a number of tracks that you have. And so if we look at some tracks, we've got um, representations of an eight channel track. And that sometimes is a very traditional um, backing drone over which stereo files are then diffused. Um, uh, it can be at one point three stereo tracks uh, and it can be um, a number of stereo tracks where the split in the acousmatic composition is less discernible. It's not like a stem where one is sustained and one is active. It's actually sometimes quite difficult to know which stereo track you're influencing. So there's a little bit more freedom for the performer to learn the piece and make decisions over and above um, amplitude shaping that they would do with a traditional diffusion work. I'm using a Behringer uh, fader box. So I have um, channels one to eight. Uh, it's just eight channel. So channels one to eight for a stereo output here and another stereo output here and then channels one, two, three, four of my eight channel here, five, six, seven, eight of my eight channel here. Um, in essence, some of these things, here's an example of an eight channel with a stereo uh, pulsed backing uh, and the eight channel being more repetitive and drone based. So you're hearing just channels one and two right now of the eight channel mix, but that's pulsing around. And then there's some active uh, material. Um, and then there are moments where some of these files are quite long and there really is uh, not a lot to do um, other than balance the work. Um, but I think it's an interesting way to uh, question um, how we can make performance a little bit more different and difficult, how we can make composition um, show itself a little bit more visibly, um, because some of these things, this dense garden one and dense garden two, they both start in the same way, but they go in different directions. And that's because I composed them on two different weeks from a same sort of starting point, but moved in different directions. And they have different directions in the piece. In fact, this leads to a termination. You won't be going any further if you, once you've selected this particular sound file. If you're interested to know more, do get in touch. Thanks.